time that it is that you come across this reading. My name is Omni Badu and I am back with another one. Yay! Keep in mind that these are general collective readings and I don't read for any one specific sign on this channel. If this is your story, your business, if this resonates, be honest with yourself, plug yourself into the reading where you deserve to be, smack it up, flip it, rub it down, hit the reverse on it, do whatever you have to do, but don't force it. Only take what resonates with you, your life, your story, and leave the rest behind. If this is your story, your business, if this resonates, give it a thumbs up. Like it if you like it, and subscribe if you like my vibe. Welcome. Hey. If you're new, and welcome back if you have been here before. Let me get all these out of here real quick. So, before we get started, I wanted to address Royal Love 77, okay? Royal Love 77 left a nasty comment yesterday saying he's tired of everybody on YouTube reading about the same negative person in the same toxic situation and how he's having this wonderful, amazing day. And then he clicks on the videos and then they're triggering and they're upsetting and they make him upset and angry and he was and they fuck his day all up, right? There's a couple of problems with that right there, Royal Love 77. The first problem is you're choosing to click on these videos after you see the title. It's very obvious, apparent, and clear in the title that the reading is going to be about someone from your past that you're supposedly over. So why yourself do you click on these videos? That's what you need to be asking yourself. You don't need to be talking to me in the comments about why I'm doing the readings that I do. The readings that I do work for the people that they're supposed to be meant for. And clearly you are not one of those people, dear, right? <laughs> I also wrote down, I have 136 combined emails and comments, right? I'm not new to this, I'm true to this, boo, okay? I got a whole nother channel, but I converted it to something else. The energy wasn't right. So I, brought a, I started a new channel, but on that channel, I received a multitude of comments and a multitude of emails, 136 to be exact, because I save all of them because I like to see them. You know, they make me feel good and they let me know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. In those comments, in those emails, people tell me, I watched your videos over and over and over and over. I've been following you for months and months and months and months. And you trigger me over and over and over and over. You let me know that this person don't love me. You let me know that this person is coming back to try to play me. You let me know that this person was playing me to begin with. How did I let them know Roy Love 77? I let them know in these motherfucking readings, okay? <laughs> so I'm doing my job. I'm triggering people into healing. Yes, the, the readings are triggering. And yes, the situations are toxic. But I didn't put you in that situation. And I didn't make you continue to hang on to somebody who wasn't fucking with you the long way, right? So... I'm doing my job. I'm doing the job that I felt guided to do, right? And me personally, I feel like I started my channel in particular so that I could let people know the truth about this person, that they do not love you. They don't love they self. They don't love the karmic. That comes out a lot in these readings because that's the message that a lot of people need to hear. And sometimes people need to hear that message over and over and over and over until it sinks in, until it clicks, until they believe it, until it becomes their truth and their reality. So don't talk down and nobody comments. I can't tell you what nobody else is doing. Me personally, I am over the person and I am over the situation. So I don't watch tarot, right? <laughs> I would never. And if I did watch tarot, it most certainly wouldn't upset me or trigger me or fuck up my day because I'm truly over it. So ask yourself, Royal Love 77, why are you clicking on videos that are going to fuck up your day? 
when you're already having a good day. You need to find another avenue and something else to watch for entertainment on YouTube because tarot clearly isn't it, okay? And I'm gonna tell y'all, myself personally, I will probably never do a full-fledged, full-on new love reading because personally, I don't feel like you should be watching tarot once you get into a new relationship. You're either still holding, harboring some sort of feelings for an ex and you still low key getting over it and you watching for that reason. And that could fuck up your new relationship if you still holding on to feelings from somebody from you, with, with somebody from your past. But I also feel like it can be confusing, right? I can't tell you about your new love. I can't say, I'm not a psychic. I just said that in the same reading that you left that comment on. So I cannot tell you what's gonna go down between you and a new love. I can't. No matter how bad you want me to tell you, this is the one, y'all finna get married, this person ain't never gonna cheat on you. I don't fucking know that shit, neither do you. And I'm not finna play with nobody and be telling them what's finna happen in their future with a new love, cause I don't know. I can tell you in the future, this person gonna keep trying to come back to you. I can tell you in the future that this person, you know, ran off on you with somebody else. Now that shit didn't work out and they're trying to, I can tell you what's going on with somebody you already know, but I'm not going to play in your energy or anybody else's energy when it comes to new love, because I feel like when you get in something new and it's sincere and it's genuine and it's authentic, y'all are supposed to get to know each other, you know, for who you really are and not be spying. That's divination spying, right? You don't want to be spying on somebody new trying to figure out, oh, am I wasting my time? If you already going in the situation with that mindset, yes, you are wasting your time. So I'll never read for new love because I feel it's inappropriate to watch tarot and, and try to figure out who a person is that way. I feel like you're supposed to figure out who they are on their own and, and you know, kind of look for those red flags if there are any and all that type of shit. That's the point in watching these readings about these people. You get to learn what a red flag is. You get to learn what you know, a toxic motherfucker is. You get to learn what a narcissist is and, and whatever a player and whatever other type of characteristic traits that these past people have. This is a, this is basically like a, a roadmap or something for what type of person that a person can be. And so you, you take this knowledge and you keep it and you hold on to it and you move on in the future with it, right? So if you over it, boo, if you're tired of hearing about it, if, you, if it fucks up your day, don't click on it. You got to ask yourself what's wrong with you. You keep clicking on readings that are titled shit that are clearly and obviously going to be all about your ex. And you the weird one, not me. Okay? All right. So we're going to dive into the reading, okay, about the same old toxic ass bullshit because that's what comes out in the cards. Y'all got somebody who can't stop thinking about you. <laughs> you got somebody who can't stop thinking about you you have someone who's obsessed. Is it true, right? I heard you were dating someone. Is it true? Please tell me it isn't. So whoever this is, I don't know if y'all are dating somebody or if this is gossip and rumors. It could be gossip and rumors that you out there dating somebody, but it may not, it may not be true. But some of y'all, it is true, but it's really not this person's like business I feel like anymore because I feel like this person showed their ass. I feel like they put their foot in their own ass. This is like that, that uh, snake that's biting its own tail, right? You know what's funny? I actually Googled that a while back because I'm just, you know, I, I like to learn things and know a lot about a lot, right? And when I Googled it, it was like, they have that symbol. It's a symbol like all over the place of a snake that's eating its own tail. People say it, it, it's eternity and it's this and it's that. But I looked up why do, do snakes really do that? And if they do, why, right? Because this is an energy of somebody who's a snake, a deceptive, a liar, a manipulator, things like that, right? So when I Googled it and I looked up, why do, do snakes really do that and why? I, I say yes, snakes really do eat their own tails, but the reason that they do it is because they're stressed, right? Or they're, you know, not in a, they're not in a like habitat that's really conducive to the habitat that they need to be in, right? 
So it was a lot, but it was, it was all of it was negative, right? The snake is, is just under a lot of stress and duress. And so it does things that a snake wouldn't normally do, right? So this is somebody who is a snake, right? And now they, they've done something that they wouldn't normally do because you, I feel like we're not as easy to manipulate or control or gaslight as this person would have hoped. And I feel like the situation, although it was stressful and it was a lot for you, it was like overbearing and shit like that when it comes to you yourself, I feel it was equally as stressful or maybe even more so stressful for the person that was trying to deceive you and manipulate you and play you and betray you because it wasn't happening, right? It wasn't going down the way that this person thought it was going to go down. So, because I literally have that, that vision or whatever you want to call it in my head where I see like a snake eating its own tail. So I feel like this, you stress this person the fuck out. You may feel like you got all the stress and you got all of the, you know, bad side of the situation. Everything that happened was more bad for you, but I feel like it was just as bad for this person. And it's like now that they've lost you or now that you've done with them or now that you don't. And I don't feel like you were playing this person's game to begin with. I feel like you were trying to deal with this person like an adult. I feel like you were trying to deal with this person as if y'all were not playing a game. I feel like you tried to maybe, you know, continue to tell this person, like, I don't know what type of game you're trying to play, but I'm not participating. I'm not, you know, I'm not playing this game with you. You're not gaslighting me. You're not deceiving me. I don't believe any of your lies. I don't, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like they they thought to themselves or they convinced themselves in a very delusional state of mind that whatever they were doing was actually working for them. But the only thing that this person was doing was changing the way you saw them, changing the way you felt about them, and changing the interactions that y'all were gonna have moving forward in the future. Because now a lot of y'all don't want anything to do with this person, or you're getting to a place where you don't wanna have anything at all to do with this person, right? And that could be due to watching tarot, right? Watching readers tell you how this person is, or even just hearing what this person is doing and who they doing it with, that alone can change the way you feel about a person, right? Especially somebody like me, ew, right? I don't care who your other bitch is. I ain't going behind that hoe. I don't give a fuck what you got going. Oh, you think you're in love with somebody else? Well, you better make sure that shit work. And if it don't work, you will never get to come back over here to me, right? Like I don't play second fiddle to no bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't sit on the back burner for no hoe. I ain't waiting around for no motherfucker to come back and pick me up and dust me off, fuck you. Right. And so a lot of y'all really are in that type of energy or you're getting to that mindset to where you like, you know what, this person got me fucked up. You know, you, this person got me confused. <clears throat> this person got me bent. They thinking this, they thinking that. And that's not what it is. That's not what it's ever been. And that ain't what it never will be. Right. So now they can't stop thinking about what y'all had because it's starting to hit this person that it is over. The situation is over. The game is over. The back and forth is over. You giving a fuck about them, it's over, right? But I feel like you got to this place because you were really truly under the impression that if a motherfucker is playing with me how this person was playing with you, they must be done with me. They must don't wanna see me no more. They must don't wanna speak to me no more. They must don't want me to be a part of their life no more. So, you know, you're like, cool, I'm not gonna embarrass myself. I'm not gonna degrade myself. I'm not gonna belittle myself trying to hang on to you. You ain't shit anyway, right? So they gave you the notion that y'all are done. And so you, you took it, you was like, okay, I'm gonna take this and run with it. And so, yeah, now they can't stop thinking about what y'all had. They're concerned if you're dating someone new, we both still need more time to heal and grow from this. And I feel like that's more so this person's mindset. Like, oh, I was just mad. I, I just need time to heal, right? Like, no, oh, now they want to play victim. And I really, that's what it really looks like and feels like. This person tried their damnedest to victimize you. And now that you're done and you're over it and you're not in that victim mentality or that victim type of mindset, they're acting like, you know, it's just that y'all need some healing, right? Oh, I just needed some time to heal. No, you showed your motherfucking ass. You don't need no time to heal, motherfucker. That ain't how you heal. 
Mistreating people is not how you heal. Gaslighting people is not how you heal. Lying to people is not how you heal. Putting your hands on people, that's not how you heal a situation. Stalking a motherfucker, that's not how you heal a situation, right? So there was a time that this person could have went the fuck on about their business and let you go on about your business. If you fell in love and, and got married to somebody else, oh well. That, that's just the way the cookie would have crumbled, you know, they had somebody else or have somebody else, but clearly that person ain't you or they'd be off your dick by now, right? <laughs> so I don't know. I feel like now, I, I really feel like this person is falling into victim mentality. I feel like they're trying to victimize themselves. I feel like this person maybe, you know, is going to start to lash out at you guys in a different type of way, right? They were lashing at you before, basically on some, oh, you're a stalker, or you're ruining my life, or I'm sick of you, I hate you, I'm tired of you, you ain't shit, you don't look good, you ain't special, you ain't smart, you ain't cute, you know, they wanted to beat you down, they wanted you to feel like you were nothing, they wanted you to think very, very little of yourself, and that was all to keep you stuck, because if you think that about yourself, and if you feel you ain't shit, and if you you know, feel like you ain't lovable and you feel like you ain't beautiful, then who else are you going to date? You ain't finna go date nobody else. You ain't finna go try to fall in love because you think you ain't shit. Well, they don't want me. Ain't nobody ever gonna want me. But see, you bigger than that and you stronger than that and you smarter than that and you never would believe no silly ass shit like that about yourself or you should not be believing no silly ass shit like that about yourself because that's not who you are and that's not what you are. That's what they want you to believe so you will stay stuck. So you cannot evolve. So you cannot move on. So you will not fall in love with anybody else. If you stay in the mindset of you ain't shit and stay in this low subservient, you know, I need to wait for them to come back because they're the only person who can ever love me. They're never going to come back to you. The only reason this person right here in these reasons is feeling like that is because you a boss ass bit, bit, bit. Bit, right period and that really is the truth if you stay in this oh they and i know they love me i know i know they gonna come back one day they are never going to come the fuck back and i know that shit is weird and it don't make sense right because once you get out of that energy and once you get out of that mindset you don't want these motherfuckers back no more but that is when they will come back because really this person has an obsession with you and really, this person cannot see you with anybody else. They don't want to see you with anybody else, but they don't want to do right by you or treat you nice or treat you good because they're spiteful. They're bitter. They're vengeful. They hold the grudge against you, and they don't want to be good to you to keep you around, but they see that being nasty to you hasn't gotten them anywhere except for booted completely the fuck out of your life for the rest of your life. It's sad, right? You could have other exes and boy, old boyfriends from high school and old girlfriends from college you can still talk to them people they can call you you might go have lunch with a motherfucker oh yeah sure we can go grab a bite to eat catch up see this motherfucker they'll never have that type of relationship with you because of all of the nasty and all of the evil and all of the malice and the cruelty that they brought into your life now why would i want to go have a bite of lunch with your bitch ass why would i want to be friends with you why would I want to sit on my phone and talk to your ugly ass? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I feel like, I just feel like that, that now that that's where y'all are or that's the energy that you're trying to adapt to, you're trying to get to that point, they got a problem with it. Now they the victim. Oh my God, right? Will you listen? There, there's so many things I want to say to you, but will you hear me all the way out? Will you believe me? This person know goddamn well you ain't finna believe nothing that they have to say. They're wondering, will you believe them? And I feel like it's more so of a, are you going to allow them to deceive you? Are you going to allow them to bamboozle you? Are you going to allow them to, gosh, what, I guess that, what is that, a form of gaslighting, right? You're trying to come in and explain, oh, let me tell you what really happened. No, no, like, it was an accident. Like, no, I didn't mean I slipped and fell in that pussy. Like, I, I don't know what happened. Like, she jumped on me. I mean, she kissed me. Like, like he, he was rubbing on my titties. I didn't, like, I wasn't a participant at all. Like, and then you had started acting crazy. And then I, you know what I mean? I didn't know how to deal with it because I ain't never been in this type of position before, right? When they come in with them type of stories, some people be like, oh, no, I understand. No, no, no. I tell you, sorry, it's people in the comments that say that shit too. 
right? It doesn't matter what happened. I'll take him back any day of the week. He's never going to come back to you, girl. Go on, move on, move on. He ain't coming back because you ain't learned shit, right? So they will. They'll come back and try to and try to feed you that bullshit, but they coming back to try to feed that bullshit to those who do not want them back. This is a vicious cycle, right? This is like this is like a spiritual attack damn near. You know what I'm saying? This person is the lowest vibration of the low. They the darkest of the dark. This person is a empty soulless black hole, right? And they want to know if you're going to hear them out. Are you going to believe their fake ass bullshit? Are you going to believe their fucking lies? Because some of y'all were manipulated by this person whole time, right? From day one, empty promises. You know, I'm always be there for you. I ain't never. And they may have meant that this person has codependency issues. They maybe never had any intentions on actually leaving you. But were they going to fulfill you? No. Were they going to be loyal to you? No. Were they going to do any things that they were saying they were going to do? I'm going to buy you a house. This motherfucker don't even got a job. How you buy me a house now? I'm going to get you that car you always wanted. They make it fucking $9 an hour. How? You buy me a car, how? And you walking and getting on a bus to get to work. What the fuck are you talking about? Right? But you might have believed it at one point in time in the very beginning. Like, well, this is just where they are today. That don't mean it's where they're going to be 10 years from now. Fast forward, fucking 12 years, 15 years, 8 years, 3 years, they still doing the same bum ass shit that they was doing, and that's how you know they were lying. They didn't intend to do any of the shit that they said they was going to do, because where does, what does their life look like now? Do it look like it did when you met them? Are they still on the same bullshit that they was when you met them? Where if they were cheating, is this person still committed or connected to somebody else and trying to run back to you quietly? Shh behind closed doors without telling this other person so you know who they are and you see how they are because they doing somebody else exactly how they did you at this time so yeah because for some of y'all they're they are the ones who's committed and attached and in a relationship or a situ situation it could be just sexual but they obsessed with each other or infatuated or something like that and so for, they trying to come back to you because they never saw the day coming that you would get too big for this bullshit they didn't they never saw the day come where you would ascend. They never saw the day come when you would transform and transmute that bullshit and turn that pain into power. They thought they broke you. They thought they crushed you. They thought you were, you know, broken beyond repair. But what you really were was a little damaged, right? You was like a fucking old can with a couple of dents and a couple of dings in it, right? You empty that can out, you can pop them dents right out that motherfucker, right? So you were a little damaged, but you were never broken. But this person considered your hurt feelings in that damaged, you know, phase that you were in at that time. They considered that, that a victory for them. That was a win for them. That was them breaking you. Oh, look what I did to this person. How weak, how whack, and how pussy do you have to be to get your rocks off because you are hurting someone else to the degree that they completely have to remove you completely from their whole entire motherfucking life. You got to be a garbage ass piece of shit, right? So it's really out of line for this person to be in this victim mentality, but they really can't help themselves. This person is obsessed with you. They want to control you. They want to dominate you. They want to possess you. This person is, treats you like an object. They treat you like you're something that, you know, that they paid for. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like, it, like as if it is your car. And it's your car and you paid for it and you paid it off. And then somebody else come in, some other man just randomly come in and snoop, swoop up your keys and ride off on your shit. That's how this person felt. Like, how dare you take my keys to my car, get in my shit and ride the fuck off. That's mine. That's my goddamn car. You literally were just an object to this person, something in their mind that they had possession over. So while you was thinking y'all was in love and you was thinking y'all was building towards a future and you thinking this and you thinking that, all they was thinking was, got him, right? Got her. I'm controlling this person. Ooh, this person really think I'm finna do these things for them. This person really think I'm finna uh, <laughs> laughing about it, talking about it with their friends. Yeah, I've been cheating on so-and-so. They don't even know. <laughs> cheating at the job. But coming in telling you, I talk about you all the time. Everybody know I'm in a relationship. Everybody know I'm married. <clears throat> you get up to the job, bitches looking you upside your head trying to figure out who the fuck you are and where the fuck you came from. Because this motherfucker ain't never opened their mouth to say nothing about you, right? 
So really this person is a piece of shit. They're a liar and whatnot. And this person is really just someone who likes control. And because they have completely lost all control, they do actually feel like a victim. This person really cannot sleep at night. This person really is falling into a depression. This person really is starting to obsess over you because they can't believe the way things are actually playing out. I'm telling y'all, this person thought they had it in the bag. They did. They thought they knew exactly what was coming next, but they didn't. They could have never seen this shit coming. And some of y'all are dating. Some of y'all are moving on. Um, or there's someone that you crushing on or somebody that's crushing on you or somebody that you think about or dream about or, you know, something like that. So I do feel like some of y'all are getting ready to start something new, but I feel like others of you are just cool. You're content, you're okay being single. Some of y'all really just wanna pour into yourself. You may feel like you let this person choose you, right? You may really sit down or maybe you really need to sit down and look back and say, did I choose them or did they choose me? Did I just look up and this motherfucker wouldn't leave my house one day and then we was in a relationship? You know what I'm saying? Or did we, like, how did this really fall into us being together for as long as we were? And a lot of y'all, this person chose you because you're sweet, because you're nice, because you're easygoing, because you go with the flow, right? You don't want to dominate or control anybody. And they maybe saw that you go with the flow as you being naive or weak or gullible, right? Oh, you're nice. So you're a pushover, right? And I kind of feel like that's how this person saw you. But really, it's just that you're sweet and you're authentic and you're nurturing and you're genuine. And, you know, you took this person on, but really this person is a project. You know what I'm saying? Like this person requires a lot of attention. They require a lot of work. They require a lot of building. You can do it. You're smart enough. You know, you could have applied for every single one of the jobs that this person had. You know, like you did a lot to this person. And a lot of y'all took on that mother role in this person's life. And that's not the type of man you want to be with, right? Or you took on a mothering or a fathering role to this woman. You don't want to be with somebody that you have to apply to their jobs and tell them to go get a haircut and tell them to go wash their ass and T you know, you tell them, you, did you put gas in the car? You know, did you, did you respond to that text message? Did you call your manager and them tell him you was going to be late? You, it looked like you finna be late. Did you call your job and tell them first? You don't want to have to do that. That's grown people shit. You should know to call your fucking job and tell them that you're running late instead of just rolling up in there 30 minutes late and thinking ain't no type of ramifications gonna come behind it. And that's the type of person that this person is. They're fucking retarded. They're a fucking child, period. So now I feel like this person is in this victim mentality and they in this crybaby ass energy. Oh, woe is me, I can't believe, oh, I just cannot believe that this happened to me. Look, take tears, literally. <sighs> Crying like a baby ass bitch. But they did this to their motherfucking self. And what's trying to do it to you? When I think about you, I cry. You sure do, you punk ass bitch, we know, right? <laughs> Why wouldn't you, the fuck? You were this person's whole ass mama, okay? You was this person's whole ass daddy. They needed you. You didn't need them. And that's the difference. That's why they needed to hold on to you and keep you as a possession. Because they need you. You don't need them. Mm. What we got? Hmm. Your smile is making me melt every time I see your face. You better miss us with that baby back bullshit, okay? The fuck are they talking about? Oh my God. Yeah, they're starting to get into this obsessive mind state over you. Stalking you on social media, because that's what it says on the obsessed card. I think I'm obsessed with you. I think about you all the time. Stalk your socials and hope I run into you when I'm out. So yeah, this person's stalking your social media. They hoping that they bump into you around town. When they see you smiling and happy, it literally, I feel like it, it, they feel two ways. I feel like it's a little bit of a punch to the gut because that happiness, that smile, it's reaching your eyes, okay? It's genuine. It's coming from your soul. It's coming from inside. If you're that happy, if you're laughing, if you're giggling, if you're having a good time, you couldn't possibly be thinking about them because the only thing 
that this ever that this person ever brought into your life was negativity disarray you know sadness darkness trauma gossip drama right this is a gossiping ass bitch this is a negative motherfucking nancy you know you may have got tired of even being attached to somebody who's always on some woe is me ain't nothing good ever gone my life and i just blah, blah, wah, wah, right always a crybaby ass motherfucker but you tired of it and you're out of it and you're over it and a lot of times when you're in it you're like not really realizing how much a motherfucker is draining you to death you don't realize that they sucking the life out your ass every waking minute of every moment of every day with their negative ass bullshit but when you get away from them and get out of it and you really get into your own thoughts and you really get into your own mindset and you can focus on shit that matter and you can build a business or you can go get a good job or you can go back to school or you can start that project you wanted to start or you can, you know, all types of things that you can focus on because you are not mothering this big dumb baby no more, right? So they know that you're not worried about them. They know that you're not sad about the loss of them. They know you're not bent out of shape because they ain't around or you ain't talked to them or you ain't heard from them. Some of y'all got this person completely the fuck blocked, okay? Blocked on everything, everywhere. Some of y'all don't have them blocked. Some of y'all feel like you can't have them blocked because y'all have kids, right? It just all depends on where you are in your healing journey or whatever. But yeah, I feel like this person knows like they've completely lost you and it's because of how happy you are now that you're away from them and you ain't worried about them. You ain't thinking about their ass and they know it. But they thinking about you. Time spent with you was the happiest time of my life. Your beautiful soul is what I crave most. You see what I'm saying? They crave your soul. They want to eat it. They want to devour it. They want it. They want to just take you and just suck you dry. It's your soul that they crave because it's a, it's bright and it's beautiful and they can eat off of it, right? They can they can do their energy vampire shit, right? Cuz they they're not what's happening is this person didn't realize that you know it was something special about you until they lost you, until they out there in them streets and they meeting these hoes, you know what I'm saying, that hate they self, and they meeting these broke bum bitches that don't have no fucking drive or no direction that they moving in, and they meeting people out there that are like them, negative Nancys, people who feel like life ain't ever gonna go nowhere for them, gold diggers, you know, they meeting a bunch of trash, garbage, all throughout, the, across the board. Every time they think they got you, in a bitch that person mask fall off two months go by three weeks go by and they like man this person is not who i thought they were this person is not what i thought they were i'm not getting what i was getting from the collective from this person ain't helping me with shit. this person is not mothering me the way that i need to be mothered right this person ain't pampering me the way i need to be pampered so they do miss your your soul but it's because they want to suck it dry you know what i'm saying period <laughs> And the time with you was the happiest time in this person's life because you were there for them through thick and through thin. Through thin. <laughs> you were there for them from the beginning to the end, right? You were there for them in any way that they would have needed you. But they didn't realize it because it was right there in front of them. And they thought, eh, I don't got to pay no attention to that. I ain't, you ain't going nowhere. I ain't never going to lose that. So they didn't realize how much you brought into their lives, but they also didn't appreciate you for it either. It was, you know, you're doing what you're supposed to do or you're giving me what I deserve, even though I don't really deserve it. You know what I'm saying? So they never appreciated it. And now that they've lost it, they crave it and they craving you bad. OK, they're obsessing bad. They miss you. They want you back. They need you literally. Right. You don't need them, but they need you. Soon. I'm gonna contact you soon. It's simple, really. How do I feel? I want you, us, forever. This, this is not good. <laughs> this not a good. I want you, us, forever. This is a, you know, this person wants you forever. Yes, they do. The, the problem is father wounds. Yeah, I feel like this person is is wants to suck you dry. I don't like. Uh -uh. I mean, I'm sorry father wounds I'm sorry I hate how much I've hurt you I'm so sorry for all the pain I've caused you didn't deserve any of it and I do feel like this person is fully aware that you did not deserve the pain that they were causing you 
We have father wounds. My father is a big influence on my behavior now as an adult. I have challenges with connecting to the divine masculine energy within me and externally. And this person may have had a father that was not around um, and, and they may have had step daddy after step daddy after step daddy, but wasn't none of them their dad. And there are men that are capable of being really good step dads and really pouring into their, you know, step sons or step daughters and really being there for those kids. But then there are also men who just want the woman and her kids are just, you know, they just there because they her kids. But I ain't finna fuck with you. I ain't finna teach you how to throw a ball, play catch with you. I ain't taking you, no, I ain't fucking with you at all. You ain't my kid. I don't give a fuck about you. So if this person had stepfathers, they had the type of stepfathers that were, you know, like seeing them basically as something in the way and as a burden. Or they had, you know, and then on top of that, you know, they may have thought, oh, if my dad was around or if my dad, my dad. So this person may have wanted some sort of relationship with their father that they didn't get. But it's also like this person didn't learn how to be responsible as an adult because they didn't have their father right around to see what it was or their dad. They could have known their dad, whether their parents were together or not. But their dad could be trifling. You know, their dad may not be a provider if their dad was around. Their dad may have been a bum, may have been the type to use their mom as a mother, you know, and things like that. And so now they think that, you know, women are supposed to just be around to cook for you and clean for you and, you know, tell you what to do and, and tell you to, you know what I mean? So it's a lot going on with this person. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, either they had a really shitty dad they had a shitty dad that was around that didn't put nothing into the relationship. They had a shitty dad that abandoned and neglected them as a kid. Or they had fucked up shitty ass stepfathers. And for a lot of y'all in that instance, if you do have kids or a kid with this person, they could be a trash ass father because they don't know what a father is. They don't know how to be a father. They don't know how to connect to the divine masculine energy. And the divine masculine is a provider. The Divine Masculine handles business. The Divine Masculine gets shit done, right? The Divine Masculine is, is a CEO or the manager or they own their own business or, you know, they're a real estate mogul, right? The Divine Masculine gets shit done. And this person is not a Divine Masculine in any type of way, shape or form. This is wholeheartedly, hands the fuck down, a karmic masculine. So yeah, if you're wondering like, oh, I can't believe they don't call the kids or they don't come and see the kids or they this or they that, they, ain't that, they don't know how to do that. They've never seen that, right? And you don't have to see that to do that. There are men who become divine masculines because their dad was a piece of shit. There are women who become divine feminines because their mom was a, a whore or a crackhead or you know, a bust down or, or an absentee mom who is chasing dick, you know, but it's, it's two different roads you can take. You're either going to be like your parents because your parents was the shit. You're going to be a piece of shit because your parents was the shit, or you're going to go the exact opposite route. There are people who have amazing parents and they choose to be pieces of shit to try to spite their parents, right? And then it's people who had those ain't shit ass parents and they choose to be the shit, because their parents wasn't shit. My parent, you know what I mean, right? In all avenues. Oh, if you had abusive, overbearing, controlling, you may be absolutely nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't whoop my kids. I don't talk down to my kids. I don't call my daughter no bitch. I don't bust my son upside his head. You know what I mean? I don't do that types of shit. Because that was, you know what I mean? That's what was done in my household, right? So there are shifts. And you can break certain types of generational curses. And I feel you're on the side of things where you're trying to break generational curses. Even if it's just as simple as nobody in my family has ever gone to college. So I'm going to make sure I go to college and that my kids, I'm going to start a new trend in, my, in our family. And it's going to start with me and mine, right? So it goes all types of different ways. And I feel like you're on the divine feminine, divine masculine side of things. <clears throat> and... That could be something that you grew into. It could be something that you always desired, but somehow you ended up connected to this karmic. And so it had to be a release and get rid of this and get over this so you could grow into this and become this and move towards this. Because this is what you always wanted to do and what you always wanted to be anyway. Then you may have really tried, I'm telling y'all, really tried to build this person up to be your emperor because you were ready to be an empress or your empress because you was ready to be an emperor but they not cut out for the job period 
I want to tell you so many times already how much I miss you. This person is too busy trying to keep control over you. And, and so they missed the opportunity to be real with you and authentic with you and actually lay it out on the line that they miss you and they love you and they sorry and all that shit that came out. There was a time that this person could have did all that and said all of that, but they missed that time. And I feel that was more of a divine timing, right? That was more orchestrated by the cosmos. I really do feel, because I feel like in the past, had this person came at you with the apologies and I miss you and, and will you just hear me out? You probably would have went, right? You probably would have heard them out and been like, okay, you know, maybe the, but now that you've really had great distance and, and the time and the space that you need to really get your mind right and really see them clearly and really see yourself clearly and really see, you know, what type of man or woman they are versus the type of man or woman that you thought they were or that you wanted them to be or you even tried to build them up to be. The divine needed you to have that time so you could be like, ah, ah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when they come towards you with this fake ass bullshit that they may try to come towards you with because at this point in time this person's going to get laughed at in their face but i'm telling y'all about a year ago a lot of y'all about a year ago six months ago you might have been maybe six months you know i don't know but you might have been like okay let me hear this person out because you at that time you may have still wanted the nice version of them but the nice version of them still didn't come with shit right Still wasn't a mature man, still wasn't a mature woman, still wasn't the type of person you want to be with for the rest of your life. You feel what I'm saying? So, still listening. I listen to the music you've shared with me. It helps me to connect with you, although we are apart. <clears throat> uh, maybe music holds memories for this person. I know they do for me. Like, I can listen to a song and remember exactly where I was and what I was doing and what time frame of, of my life it was. And, oh, we was partying a lot, you know, at the time that this song came out. We had so much fun, right? So this person may be like that to where music holds memories literally for them. And um, hmm. so they could be listening to music to try to... It says to help them connect to you although y'all are apart but i almost feel like it's almost like connecting to you more so in a manifesting type of way like this person may be trying to like manifest those good times when y'all used to listen to that music together or when y'all used to send each other songs or something like that this person could even be sending y'all a lot of music just you know some of y'all just have that type of bond or connection to where music really connected y'all this person could be in the music industry. They could be a rapper, a singer, a musician, or something like that. And so y'all really could have really had a deep bond or, or music really could have connected y'all at a point in time. This person could almost fucking ruin music for you, for some of y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even want to fucking hear a drum ever again in my life, you know? <laughs> but I feel like, you know, y'all have got past that point. So... Their stagnation, which we know with the hangman, the stagnancy as far as this person is concerned, as far as you're concerned, it's over. But as far as this person is concerned, it's stagnant and nothing is moving. So they feel like they want to come towards you and try to basically unbreak your heart. Although you are no longer, you're no longer heartbroken. You're no, lo you're no longer in the three of swords energy. You're no longer in pain. You're no longer feel like I can't believe or how dare they, right? For a lot of y'all, or this is gonna happen once you get reach this point, right? So this, for a lot of y'all, these readings are future energy. You know, you could still very much be heartbroken and, and tore up over this situation and that's okay, right? Just stay away from this person while you feeling like this. Stay away from them until you don't feel like this no more, right? Because when you are heartbroken and when you are sad, you kind of do want somebody to to dust you off right you want somebody to pick you up and make you feel better i mean it's just it's that's natural that's a human reaction right but as you continue to be away from them you will start to pick your own self up and dust your own self off and feel better within your own self right so yeah if you there just be patient with yourself and know that you will get through it. You will get past it. You're not going to feel heartbroken and tore up over this person in this situation forever. 
Um, and by the time you're over it, that they're, they're going to realize that you're over it. And that's when they're going to start feeling some type of way and obsessing over you and whatnot. And trying to see if you're going to hear them out. Because even though this, even though y'all are so smart, right? And y'all are so strong. And this person is seeing that although they took your kindness as a weakness, they're starting to see that you're not as weak as they thought. For those of y'all who have moved on already, they still going to try to come towards you and try to bamboozle you and manipulate you and lie to you and gaslight you with this will you listen type bullshit, right? They really want to know, like, are they going to waste their time coming towards you spewing this fake ass bullshit out their mouth or will you actually gobble it up? Because they, their intention is to come and unbreak your heart, but you've already unbroke your own. You've already healed on your own. You've already released them, released the pain, released the all of that. You've already gotten over them and gotten over this by your damn self. Which is tough. That's especially when you got years in, especially when you was married to a motherfucker and you put your all into their bitch ass and you really tried to build them up. You really tried to see the best in them. You really tried to make sure, you know, that the world didn't look at them like a crusty foot bum ass motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You like, you know what? You, my people hate your ass, you know? So let me keep, let me make sure you keep a job, you know? So my people ain't looking down on you. Ain't even worried about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I love you for it, right? Cause I, I've been in that position where you just like, you know, maybe they just need a little more time or maybe they just need to find the right position or maybe they just need this or maybe they just need that. And it's like, you waste all your time and energy and effort trying to build somebody else up that's a that's a hard lesson that's a hard pill to swallow but it's like i ain't never gonna do that shit again if you ain't got your mind right if you don't know what you want to be if you don't know where the fuck you going if you don't know what the fuck you doing you need to get the fuck from around here right so that's the lesson for a lot of us for a lot of us the lesson is take a motherfucker for what they are when you see what they are if a motherfucker is a bum and a loser and laying around on the couch and slumming and bumming and living with this person and that person and ain't got no car and ain't got no job and ain't got nowhere to live that's who the fuck they are and that's who the fuck they want to be living in storages and shit you know what i'm saying couch surfing damn near just fucking minutes away from a box and a bridge you feel me right so you just got to see people for who they are and what they are. This is a, that's a fucking shitty ass lesson to learn, but it's a lesson that a lot of us have to learn because when you young, right, and you're a good person and you're sincere and you're genuine, you don't want to look down on nobody, right? You don't. And, and that just, eesh, right? Bitch your ass in the butt, okay? So we have the lovers in the reverse. This, so they want to come in. They want to know if you're going to believe them. They want to try to unbreak your heart or at least, I guess, take the negativity out of the situation between y'all or, you know, kind of, you know, act like y'all, I don't know what, I don't know. They trying to temper the situation. Okay. They trying to bring temperance between the two of y'all. They trying to bring temperance in, into the situation between you guys. They want to go take the situation down a different path because they took it down this toxic, negative, you know, I'm holding a grudge, I hate you, spiteful, bitter ass, vindictive, a bitter man, a bitter man is so nasty. That's nasty work, that's unattractive as fuck. You know what I'm saying? And they've already shown you their true colors. They've already shown you who they truly are. They've already shown you how they truly are. So, now they want to try to, you know, put all of that behind y'all. You know what I'm saying? As if it never happened. As if you're going to be like, oh, okay, let me slap these blinders back on and see you the way I... Bitch, please. The fuck? Ah, right? <laughs> That's really more so, ah, I don't like, what are you doing over here? Ah, right? <laughs> you don't know what the fuck is going to happen because you like, I don't know you. I never knew you. I never thought you'd be capable. I never, all that I did for you and all that you did not do for me and this is how the fuck you think this shit is finna play out? You finna come back and, and we just gonna be like, okay, woo, a bee bee da ba boo boo da da, right? We finna start playing hand games and shit, patty cake, like, no, motherfucker, fuck, what, hello? 
what hello what is going is the hell mike right that's really the energy like why are you on my phone <laughs> what are you doing here why are you at my door that's really with the type of time that you finna be on but that ain't the type of time that they want you on so they want to try to smooth things over and patch things up but really this person is fucking seething on the inside this person is mad they're angry they're bubbling they're boiling and if you take them back this is what you really gonna get what you really gonna get is how motherfucking dare you try to move on how motherfucking dare you try to act like you don't want me no more how motherfucking dare you try to act like you better than me bitch right that's really what you're gonna get from this person because really this person is angry violent aggressive abusive whether it be verbal mental physical spiritual or emotional or all of the motherfucking above this is an aggressive violent evil lying cheating i think i'm the shit because i can have sex look at me i'm having sex I, i'm the man i'm having i look i'm having sex i'm him i ain't got no job i ain't got nowhere to stay I have no stability. I bring nothing to the table. I'm broke as fuck, but I'm him though, because I got a dick, right? That's really the type of time that this person is on. This is a motherfucking loser. And a lot of y'all done already got rid of this person, and it's like, they know it's done. They know it's over. They know it's through, okay, period. <sighs> so here you are, like you're showing up as this high priestess energy, extremely intuitive, and a lot of y'all already know that this is coming. A lot of y'all know this person is going to obsess over you and stalk you and continue to pop up years and years and years and years and years in the future. You know, once a year, every couple of years, every couple of months, this person is going to be trying to come back and find you or find a way in, find a way back in, right? Because they're never going to find you again. You're one of one, okay? You're rare as fuck. You're a motherfucking diamond, right? But you were in the rough when they met you. Because if you were the shiny diamond that you are today, you would have never even spit on this motherfucker if you seen him. You wouldn't even, you, none of that. You would have been like, ooh, I don't even see your ass, right? Like you do now. Because you don't see their ass no more. But you're one of one. And this person knows that you're one of one. They know that you're rare. They know that you're unique now that they have lost you so they want you back the high priestess looks good too so a lot of y'all are really beautiful and mysterious and captivating and sexy right you may be very unattainable you're hard to get you're hard to keep and that's really how i feel like you are but it was something about this person's fake charm and their fake charisma and and they're fake ass, fake ass, fake bullshit. And they good dick, okay? Because this person may only have good dick to, to offer. And you might have been spinning. And you might have got a little dick dizzy just a little bit, you know? <laughs> and, and a thought more needed to go down than a little bit of bedroom business. But I hate to say it, you should have smashed this and passed this, okay? This was, this should have been, you know, this should have been a fling. Right, this should have been somebody who was in your life for a season, right? And then you had to learn the reason why they should have only had to have been in your life for a season, right? <clears throat> yeah, this was this should have been a booty call and nothing more. Ooh, thanks for that. You know what I'm saying? But when you younger, you know, and you're 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 in your twenties and you like, oh, this might be the one. Everybody might be the one when you're your fucking twenties. You know what I'm saying? So Cause you just you haven't learned shit yet you just got out the house you still a baby you know you still a kid you still so don't beat yourself up especially if you met this person in your like any time i don't care if you was 27 you still a baby right so or you could be 27 now you know just kind of just now waking up to like holy shit you know i've been crawling around here blind like here i am you know i'm finally taking my first steps you know <laughs> look at me i'm walking look at me you know what i'm saying it's like now you like holy shit like i'm growing the fuck up i got my grown mind going and it's telling me girl what the fuck was you thinking girl what the fuck <laughs> Why the fuck would you think this is the type of person you should want to expand with and be with for a long? This motherfucker didn't have no job when you met him. You know what I'm saying? So you could be getting a little mad at yourself or a little disappointed at yourself, but don't, right? You learned a very good, valuable lesson from this person in this situation. 
And if you're in your mid-30s or early 30s, you learned that shit early, okay? Because I know bitches in their 50s that's still out here getting bamboozled and played by nothing-ass motherfuckers. And it's like, they went through, like, you ain't learned shit in all these years. In all these years, you ain't learned shit. So it, a lot of y'all getting this savage-ass lesson so early in life that nothing but greatness can only come after this, right? So really give yourself a pat on the back you know what i'm saying because you learned a lesson that some people never learn some people never learn this lesson and they keep get, getting with bum ass motherfucker after bum ass motherfucker after bum ass motherfucker after bum after bum and they trying to figure out why is it i ain't married yet bitch you ain't never gonna be married <laughs> Cause you don't know how to, you know, say no to a motherfucker. This, there are people out there and they 50 still letting people choose them rather than choosing their partner. So, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. I feel like, you know, as we know, behind closed doors and behind the scenes, this person is fucking seething. And if you take them back, they are going to try to punish you and put you in your place and show you where you fucked up at letting them go. That's laughable, but it's true. But it's they're stressed, they can't sleep, they're depressed, they're they're not doing well. They could have be having nightmares, or this person they either are sleeping all day every day, or they can't get the or they can't get their eyes closed at night. They they close, they get in the bed and they toss and they turn and they turn and they toss and they toss and turn and they kick the covers off or put the covers on. And kick. But don't y'all remember when we was there? When we was trying to figure out what the fuck is going on? Just simply, that's all I want to know is what the fuck happened. You know what I'm saying? And we couldn't sleep because we couldn't figure out exactly what the fuck was going on. That's exactly where this person is. So now that nasty, dirty ass shoe that they tried to put on your foot is it's now on their foot. It is. And they don't like that shit. And six of swords, right? They trying to smooth things over. Three of pentacles. They want to be your friend. And it's because you're, you've either ghosted them or you're very quiet. It's, it's crazy when you don't have a motherfucker blocked and you don't call them or text them or respond to any of their anything. And some of y'all could be there to where it's just like very minimal... You know, this person could be on some bullshit. You know, oh, are the kids sleep? You know, it's fucking 9.30. They know your kids go to bed at 8.30. It's 9.30. The kids sleep, first of all, you could have texted the kids themselves to see if they were asleep. You know what I'm saying? And maybe you would have went off in the past or maybe you would have called, oh, it's 9.30 and he asking about the kids. Let me see what he doing. You know, he must have some free time. Yeah, no. Yeah. You know, now you might be like on some, yep, and that's all they get back. You know, that's the end of that conversation. Why the fuck did you even text me that? You know, goddamn me well, my kids are asleep. I don't play that shit, right? Because I don't play that shit at all. I, I have cousins and folks who be having their kids be up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And y'all, I be in there stressed my damn self. Like, why is your kids up? You don't ever get a break, right? You wonder why you stressed and why you, I hate it, I hate it here. And all these types of shit. It's because you don't give yourself a break. Put them motherfuckers in the bed. And they need to be in the bed so they can grow and, and so their brains can grow and they can rest. And you know what I'm saying? Like, put them motherfuckers in the bed. That's why your baby's so small and, and malnutrition looking. Like, feed it and put it to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Why is your kids up at 3 o'clock in the morning at fucking 4 years old? That's crazy. That baby needs sleep. It's, it's not okay. That is not cool. So, yeah. Boy, I'm telling you. I'm telling you structure it's important <sighs> look at this look at the tower oh my lanta oh Ooh. Hmm. wow uh, yeah i mean as we know if this person tried to go be with somebody else they're going through a tower moment um I mean, you know, it's nasty, nasty business. They thought this person was a soulmate. You know, they thought they was gonna be having all this money. They was charming this person and putting all this energy and effort and time into this person. Whole time, for some of y'all, this person was sneaking around with somebody else in the background and they walked away from your masculine, this ex or whoever this person is. And it's very burdensome and troublesome to this person. Yeah, see, that's another thing. 
you know, the readings are not always the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? The premise is always very similar, but some of them is dealing with somebody who's in another relationship. Some of them is dealing with a whore. Some of them got a bitch pregnant and they living together. You know what I'm saying? Like some of them just living with somebody, but the person is fucking like 19 and they 40. You know what I mean? So it's not always the same. It's just very similar energy. Any narcissist, any fuck boy, any fuck girl that try to run off and go have something better somewhere else and they find out the grass is greener, they're always going to bring their narcissistic, psychotic, sociopathic, crazy ass back to the one that tried to hold them down, the one they tried to shit on. That's just, that just is what it is, right? Yeah, but this person looked like they were dealing with somebody who was they thought that they had offered some sort of stability, like they offered a title to this person basically. And the person was like, oh yeah, I could be a girl, you could be my man or whatever it is. But they was fucking with somebody else behind the scenes. And they, this, well, the other person had more to offer, so that's who they chose. And this, whoever this masculine is, they're mad as fuck. They, they already felt like they weren't good enough because you tried to walk away from them or whatever y'all had going on or because whatever. But now somebody else is walking away from them and it's just really, they're angry. This person is seething, I'm telling you. Look at this shit. The Five of Swords with the Empress. If this person's, they want to win at all costs. They want you back at all costs. Whether they have to lie to you, deceive you, betray you, manipulate you, no matter what it takes, they want you back because you're an Empress, because you hit different, because you're one of one, because you're rare, because you're a diamond. But this person also has this five of swords is also a very aggressive abusive you know energy a very aggressive abusive nature that this person has and so this person they they want to smooth things over and they want to let's be friends and kumbaya and all this types of shit. but a lot of y'all know that that's not really what it is or what it's really gonna be you've already they've already shown you they true colors you already know. You like you, yo, evil, mean, bitter, grudge holding, vengeful, unforgiving heart, empty black hole having that. You ain't finna like, bitch, please. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, yeah, seven of wands with the empress. You ain't going for this goofy ass bullshit. You're so fucking excited to be in this new phase of your life without this fucking burden. This is the burden. This is this is the fucking thing you needed to release and drop and let go of. And a lot of y'all are like good. You like, I ain't let this motherfucking trash go. I ain't finna take your bitch ass back into my life. You ain't shit. Your mama ain't shit. Your sister ain't shit. Your brother ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Your daddy ain't shit. Your cousin them, they some garbage ass fucking drug dealing ass trash. Fuck you and them. Uh-uh. I should have never been caught up in your family's bullshit. Y'all are garbage. Some of y'all could be a Libra. Some of y'all could be a Scorpio. Um, Cancer Pisces. But you're breaking this person. This person is heartbroken over the fact that, oh, yeah, whoa, they feel deceived. Yeah, this person is feeling betrayed by you, Ten of Swords, because you it's over. This is a final, complete ending. Tens are, are you know, full circle type shit. And now they feel betrayed and deceived by you or they've been betrayed and deceived in another situation and that is completely fucking dead and done and over and the fact that you ain't waiting in the wings like they thought you you were got them feeling deceived and betrayed and stabbed in the back by you you know how dare you move on the other person they may have thought they were in love or had they started developing feelings that person then broke their heart And now they just, they gonna try to come in and force you back into some sort of connection with them. Ten of Cups. Some of y'all do have kids with this person. Or some of y'all felt a level of comfort or they felt like home to you at one point in time. You still feel like home to them though. They, they gonna rush in towards you trying to have equal give and take. So, I mean, as per usual, this is just somebody that they know you don't trust them. Okay. They know why you have them blocked energetically literally physically it doesn't matter they know what it is they know what it is and they know why it is the way that it is but they're going to try to come towards you with some sort of communication that they feel will fulfill your wishes and for some of y'all they can pop up at your shit 
you know, they may pop up at your job. They may pop up on your phone. You may have this person blocked, but y'all know how it is. This motherfucker, you go out there and get a VOIP, and you can call whoever the fuck you want, and you can get, you know, number after number after number after number over there. You know what I'm saying? So just because you got this person blocked, that don't mean they won't find a way to call you. I had blocked somebody on everything I thought. This was an ex from, like, literally high school. Um, but he got a little stalkery, and I blocked him everywhere. And this motherfucker called me on Facebook Messenger <laughs> because I didn't realize that you that those are completely different things now. You know what I'm saying? I was like, God oh, damn, you know, like I done blocked you here and blocked you there and blocked you here and blocked you there. And this motherfucker pops up everywhere, y'all. And this is somebody that I stopped talking to, dating or dealing with in that type of way when I was um like 20 years old. Okay, and I'm 34, <laughs> and this man still be popping up everywhere, calling me and shit. And he, it ain't no smoke or nothing over there. He, ain't, we really didn't go through nothing bad. I just don't like for my exes to be trying to still be a part of my life like that. But he does. He wants to be a part of my life or whatever, and he calls me. You know what I mean? So the point is, if somebody want to call you, if somebody want to reach you, if somebody want to speak to you or see, they gonna find a way. This motherfucker gonna find a way because what they need is their wishes fulfilled. They're selfish, right? Because the Nine of Cups is also a selfish energy, you know? And I feel like this person is selfish. And, and so they're going to put in a lot of work to try to get you to smooth things over with them. This is going to be, this is a battle, right? This is going to almost be a battle for your freedom, for your liberated energy, for your new beginnings. You're fighting to stay away and to stay free and and to heal and release and they're fighting to hang the fuck on they fighting to stay in the in the mix you know what i'm saying so just stay strong is what i want to say i feel like y'all are gonna stay strong i feel like y'all are standing on whatever because you know this person tried to knock you off your square you know they did and i feel like now that you back on your shit you ain't gonna let this same piece of shit to knock you off of your fucking square again okay all right y'all so that's gonna be our reading be sure to give it a thumbs up like it if you like it subscribe if you like my vibe my name is omni badu i love each and every one of you guys thank you for your likes your subscriptions your donations keep them positive comments coming okay and if you leave anything other than you might show up in a reading okay if you want a person to read, jump down in the description box below. And until next time, bye.